Well, Al, as uh, Lauren mentioned in the piece, he struggled a little bit in 2020 for a variety. He struggled with injuries and mechanical issues, but he's seemingly back. What have you seen from Mackenzie Gore? Um, confidence, a, a, a more sleek, uh, efficient delivery. I, I think with Mackenzie Gore, and I, I remember that when, when he was drafted in 2017, top pick, top arm out of a uh, high school in North Carolina. Here's a guy that had an unorthodox delivery. And I remember when he was drafted, we were doing the, wow, it looks kind of Kershaw-esque. Let's see how this kid develops through the minor leagues. When you have a lot of moving parts, and I'm going to show that, there's certain amount of timing that becomes a problem with respect to where you're able to throw the baseball a la walks, right? So let me just go into uh, this right here. This is the biggest thing then as I show this tape, but if you look at this, folks, this is a high percentage in, in, our, in our game now. 62.5% he throws fastballs, but you see why with when we get in the tape, a 198 batting average, he's got curveball, slider, changeup, very small usage of changeup. So it's basically an assortment of two varied speeds on his breaking ball. Curveball being slower, his slider a little harder in velocity, a little bit of hit here and some damage on his on his curveball. But the fastball is what really plays. So let, let's go into the tape, showing why his or his delivery is a bit unorthodox. But I wanted to look really look dig deep, and I mentioned about the draft. When you go back to the 2017 draft, Lucas, just pull back, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eventually go back. Start, stop right there, Lucas. Back it up. All right, so, so it's obvious. I mean, you don't have to be a major league pitching coach. High hands, big leg kick. And this was part of his timing, rhythm, and tempo, to be able to stay back and do what he thought effectively to make pitches. Kind of collapse on his lower knee. And I remember when that happened, I was like, all right, well then, you know, get in a professional organization. They'll be able to streamline his delivery. Stop one second. That, what I just said, is not easy. You have the psyche of every single player. They've been playing since they were five years old, 10 years old. When you have a delivery like this and an exceptional arm, most organizations, especially when you start out, it's the old proverbial, just leave him alone. Let him play, let him do his thing, and let's see how it all plays out. With respect to Mackenzie Gore, there was a control issue as a result of a lot of moving parts. So what happens? You get in bad counts. We've been talking about it this whole show, about guys throwing strikes, getting ahead to be able to expand. So he gets in here. You got the lower arm leg uh, with his hands. He doesn't go as far over. Back up here one second, Lucas, because I don't want to I don't want to lose this. Keep, keep going back up, back up, back up. All right, start out in the delivery where his hands come up. All right, we'll get the next one. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I know Lucas hates it. Stop right there. Back up. Oh one click gosh. at a time. Thank you. Oh All right, so streamline. You want to not be able to uh, have so many moving parts, although this is his, his MO. This is his DNA. But this right here, allowing him to be under control, or more so under control, he didn't go as far as high up with his hands, and therefore putting him in a consistent release point. Go ahead. All right, so now what happens as a pitcher? I don't care if you're little league, high school, minor leagues, big leagues, Hall of Famer or not. When you start pounding the zone, you start believing in yourself as a pitcher, everything becomes easier. Why? Because you're in better counts. And now that crisp, elevated high fastball, 96, 97, 98 miles an hour, hitters are on the defensive. You end up throwing some breaking balls, or you keep getting heaters there, as we just saw the ball, I think that was, four heaters in a row. An elevated uh, level of confidence. How about this right here? Stop right here, because this is going to be before the Colorado Rockies. This goes back since 1969. Steve Rogers, who uh, works at the PA, won two ERA, lowest through his first nine appearances. So you know what he was doing. It was domination, and it was primarily by a fastball. Go ahead. I mean, here's, you know, again, the mojo for most guys when they start believing their, their delivery's crisp, it's aggressive, and they believe in what they're doing, obviously. All right, Colorado Rockies, I had to show it. Leave some balls up, getting some bad counts, and yes, it does happen. The 1 5 ERA going into these two starts, back to back. I'm doing it because it was his last two starts. A little, a little, a uh, little 30 Peter. love right there, getting in there. He ends up giving up. Uh, Actually had a 20 ERA. So what's it? Your next start, you go to Colorado. Wow, good. That's yummy. You get a chance to uh, give it up at uh, home park, and now you have this here. So as a result, the ERA went up into the three sixes. You can see what's happening here. Maybe getting a little defensive. Th saw more changeups in these two games. Flat slider in Colorado. You know what happens. Ends up giving up like 15 runs. 
uh, and an ERA at 20. Those were his last two starts. But a guy who's now learned and understands who he is, and you have, again, the idea of knowing what he is. Let me see right here if we could do a little side-by-side -side of what I showed early on of the arms coming up and they're not quite as high. And as a result, stop right here. Thank you, guys. Keep going, click up right here. We'll do the high school. Keep going, keep going, keep going. All right, stop right there. Holy moly. All right, and then this is the maximum height. So, you know, again, who got to him? Coordinator, pitching coach, you know, say, hey, look, we know we drafted you for this because it was who you were, but let's get into a position where you're not as accentuated there because by doing something like that, with your hands so high, when do you when do you release? When do you come to your gathering point? I know Clayton Kershaw was able to do it, something similar, but you can see that, guys. It's it's very discernible. That said, he's at his pinnacle. It's about his hat. You see what he did out of high school, and even I had the high school video when he was number one pick out of high school in, in North Carolina. As a matter of fact, one quick thing, and I wait, back it up. Another another part of this. Stop right here. So you have a lot of collapsing here. So he started from a high position. If you look at here, he's got a little Tom Seaver dragging his knee. But when he comes out of this, this is really hard to be consistent with your delivery. See how low he is here? He's not touching here, but now when he comes out, it's a whole pole vault effect. When the ball comes out of his hands, he firms up. And it's just a better, more efficient, stronger delivery of what he's doing now. It's the reason why he was a top pick a few years ago. I mentioned about his fastball usage. It's unusual. I know Spencer Strider, uh, what did you say, Quadzilla? Quadzilla oh, is the nickname, yes. There you go. Big arms. Uh, certainly all these guys throwing, uh, you know, 95 or better. So there's a reason why they should be throwing uh, fastballs because everything yeah. goes off your fastball. Al, that's that's a fan Stuff. another fantastic breakdown. Yeah. Uh, the bad news is uh, there have been mass resignations in the control room because of <laughs> your uh, because of your behavior. They're like, Al's back. Oh, stop. Go. I'm sorry, Lucas. Great stuff. Great stuff, Al.